This is Finland's only high-speed train, the troubled VR Pendolino. We'll be looking into the difficult history of these tilting express trains where they struggled to survive harsh winters, and discover what it's like to ride on them today as I show you inside this train's first class, while checking out the onboard restaurant service. So join me for a ride through Finland on the country's problematic high-speed train. Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm here in Helsinki, Finland's capital city, and I'm going to be travelling with VR Finnish Railways on board one of their Pendolino trains to Turku. I've booked myself into the extra class seating today, so I'm looking forward to seeing how Finnish Railways perform in their premium seating area. Let's go! Welcome to Helsingin Parautatiasema, or to use the English translation, Helsinki Main Station. Let's waste no time at all and head inside using these classic wooden doors. Now I just love the station in Helsinki. It's a perfect combination of old times design and modern functionality. Just look at the entrance hall. The main station building features a decent supply of shops and food outlets. You'll find some regular convenience stores and a few coffee shops around too. There's even a proper bar and whilst the location is great, you certainly pay a high price. By the way, this station also has a ticket office, but as I bought online, I didn't visit this. There are two departure boards in the main hall, one for local trains and one for long distance traffic. My train is S955, the 1336 service for Turku. Right, let's head out to the platforms. My train is planned to depart from platform 11, and as you can see, there's nothing here just yet. But that gives us plenty of opportunity to look around and see the other trains. Most long distance services in Finland are operated with these positively massive double deck trains. These sets are loco hauled, with the country having a large fleet of modern electric locomotives. You can often see a lineup of these at Helsinki station. This fleet runs all over the country, with daily services departing for well above the Arctic Circle. Needless to say, they are built to handle the toughest of winters. Helsinki also has a reasonably sized commuter railway network, featuring four lines mostly served by these modern Stadler flirt units. By the way, Finland's railways use a 1524mm track gauge, just 4mm more than the very similar Russian gauge, but considerably larger than a standard European train would use. Until recently, there were frequent departures from Helsinki that went to Russia. Most trains were Allegro services to St. Petersburg. But there was also a daily sleeper train to Moscow, known as Tolstoy. These services have now both seized for obvious reasons. The Allegro trains were unique in that they were designed for a gauge they never ran on, 1522mm. This allowed them to use both Finnish and Russian tracks without the need for time-consuming and complex gauge-changing procedures. Finland is also a fully bilingual country, with Finnish and Swedish both having official status. Therefore, all railway signage is in both languages, but almost everything is in English too. Eventually, my Pendolino train arrives at Helsinki station. It's operated by Valtio and Rautatiet, translated as State Railways, but usually shortened to VR. The company has a fleet of 17 six-car units, which are used on long-distance routes around the country. These trains date back to the early 1990s, with their tilting technology and high-speed running expected to revolutionise rail travel in Finland. However, by winter, this plan was falling apart, as the train couldn't handle the cold weather. The couplings and tilting system in particular were known to struggle. Many years on, in 2006, the then CEO of VR Group stated that the Pendolino fleet was causing serious image problems for the company due to the unacceptable reliability. However, in the years since this statement, multiple upgrades have been made to the troubled parts of the train, and nowadays, they are at least a little bit more reliable. Well, I don't think these units will win any awards for their appearance, 
but let's get on board and find my seat for today's trip. I'm travelling in VR's extra class today, which is what they call first class. It's quite a step up to the train, but these units are also fitted with wheelchair lifts if needed. Extra class is in a 2 plus 1 layout, as you'd expect for a first class product. My seat will be number 7, a rear facing window seat. Today's route will see us heading through southern Finland, riding west from the capital over to the major city of Turku. The journey is scheduled to take 1 hour and 58 minutes to cover 190 kilometers or about 118 miles. We end up departing on time at 13.36, heading north out of Helsinki's terminal station. It's only around 5 minutes later that we're pulling into Pasila, the first station on the route out of Helsinki. It serves as an alternative to Helsinki's main station, and is intended to ease overcrowding at the busy terminus. It also has a nearby car loading station, just north of the platforms, allowing passengers to load their car onto an overnight train there, and then board their sleeping carriage back here. Now let's take a look around the interior here in Extra Class. We'll start off with the seats. These are in a hard-wearing brown cloth design, which I think looks smart. The base cushion is very well padded, and with a firm backrest, this results in a comfy and ergonomic seat. There's also a head cushion, though I found this to be too bulky, meaning it uncomfortably pushed my head forwards. Between seats, you can find a large folding armrest. Beside the seat cushion, you can find a lever for the recline, though strangely, this recline was airline style, and means you lean into the space of the person behind. This also means that seats next to the wall have limited recline, so be careful when choosing a seat. All details about window alignment and surroundings can be clearly seen when making your booking on VR's easy-to-use website. Legroom on this train is fantastic, with plenty of room even for longer journeys. You can also find an adjustable footrest for more comfort. Above this is a little net for storing your smaller items. And of course, a seat back table can be folded down from the seat in front. This provides a well-sized surface for working on, and four little notches to hold a drink in place. On the wall, there are two European-style plug sockets. This works out as one per passenger, but the aisle seat passenger's cable will have to stretch past the window seat passenger. Next to this is the bin bag, a typical feature of trains in Nordic countries, instead of having an actual bin. Meanwhile, back outside, we are speeding through the countryside of southern Finland. The top speed of these Pendolino trains is 220 km an hour, but this is only possible to achieve on a short section of track heading north. Most of the route to Turku is limited to between 120 km an hour and 160 km an hour. Each of these Pendolino trains is equipped with six toilets, located at the end of each carriage. These were in really good condition for the entire journey. This soap dispenser was empty, but luckily the other one was working. As was the water, and the hand dryer. One of the benefits of Extra Class is the complimentary tea and coffee. This is self-service, with the facilities located in the centre of the carriage. You can also find free bottles of drinking water. I helped myself to a pusite, which translates as tea bag. It was a very cold day, so this was definitely what I needed. This journey was going perfectly until we came grinding to a halt in the middle of nowhere. At this point, I was almost expecting to hear that the train had broken down, as they have many times in the past. Well, let's take this opportunity to have a look at the onboard restaurant service. 
Menu cards are provided at all seats, though to my knowledge you do have to go to the restaurant car if you want to order. This is located in coach 3, towards the middle of the train. On the way there, we can take a look at the Eco class, which is what VR calls its second class. This is in a slightly less spacious 2 plus 2 layout, but still looks pretty good. This carriage features the dedicated wheelchair and pushchair area too, as well as the accessible toilet. And here we are at the restaurant. One half of the carriage consists of seating around tables, where you can sit down to enjoy a proper onboard meal, while the other half features a standing area with a counter. You can find a good selection of snacks on display here, but a choice of proper meals is available too. I've left a link to the menu in the description. As I had already eaten, I went for the lemon muffin and a little bit of chocolate. This cost €3.40, which seems like a reasonable price for Finland, especially on a train. After a few minutes of waiting, we're informed that there is overrunning engineering works, as the staff make what is possibly the most honest announcement in railway history to explain how long we'll be waiting. We end up leaving here around half an hour after we arrived. Ten minutes later, we arrive in Tukaris station. This region is one of the few in Finland that has a Swedish-speaking majority, with 66% calling it their native language. Compare that to the rest of Finland, where just 5% speak Swedish as their native language. Finland is a truly beautiful country, no matter what time of year you visit it. I visited in winter, and by the next day, the entire area was coated in a thick layer of snow. But despite just missing out on that, there was still an amazing sunset on offer. Though if it's too bright, you can use the effective sun blinds, like so. If you want more light, then there are individual reading lights located above your seat. This is helpful, as the train has a very relaxed ambience, with subdued warm lighting. An insane supply of coat hooks is available, with four located at the end of each window and an additional one on the edge of each seat. Luggage storage can be found above seats, in the overhead luggage racks, as well as a few luggage stacks dotted throughout the train. Wi-Fi is available, and passengers here in extra class get a dedicated network. The speeds were reasonable, though I didn't check to see if it was actually any faster than the rest of the train. Now on to how much this journey cost, and I think this will surprise you. I bought my ticket just 10 days in advance, and booked this first class ride for just €29.90. Euros Finland is generally an expensive country, but its railways are consistently excellent value for money, and this trip was no exception. After about two and a half hours, we finally pull in to Turku station, which is very basic for such a major city of 200,000 people. Arrival at Turku is 29 minutes late, entirely due to the overrunning engineering works. Overall, I was very impressed with Finland's high-speed train. When it works, it's a really pleasant train to ride, and I wouldn't hesitate to try a longer journey on one in the future. As always, let me know what you thought of the VR Pendolino in the comments, and for a look at another Nordic high-speed train, then click up here now to see Sweden's fastest ever train.